Hello, everybody, and welcome to our webinar about guarding against deception, phishing scams, and how to stay protected. So today we are going to talk a little bit about how to keep yourself and your business protected from phishing scams, which are sadly all too common these days. So let's get right into this. So uh, introducing myself, so I am George Chartier. I am the Connected Services Consultant for here at RCN Technologies. Um, basically what I do is I'll, I'll deal with any of the connected services that we sell, whether that be uh, managed service or whether that be failover backup internet. That's the type of thing that I deal with. And so with that, I've gotten a lot of experience with different uh, security flaws and security practices that a lot of these places will have in place to prevent phishing, which, as I've said, has become an increasingly problematic issue and an increasingly common issue throughout uh, this digital age that we've found ourselves in. So here's what we'll be covering today. So first off, we'll be talking a little bit about what phishing is in general. Um, so different things that, that people will try to do to get your information and uh, what the purpose of that would be. Uh, how to spot a phishing scam is another thing that we'll be doing, talking about basic safety precautions that you can take uh, just by being observant to the things that people will do uh, to try to get your info. Then we'll be talking about how to enhance your uh, safety as you're navigating the digital world that we have here. Um, as well as some safety precautions that you can take with different pieces of equipment, such as the things from CradlePoint uh, that RCN has implemented for quite a few different businesses across the country as we have tried to make this a safer place uh, for people to be, uh, and as well as doing some Q&A here at the end. So let's start this out with a poll. How many of you have heard of the term phishing before? Um, so go ahead and answer that question. And while you're answering that, um, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about this. So uh, the first time I had ever heard the term phishing was when I began to, uh, to get into the workforce and I started taking all these trainings and I was, I was thinking it, how crazy it was that, that the, this was becoming an increasingly common problem throughout uh, the wireless industry uh, when I had first started selling. So it seems like a majority of you in here have heard of phishing before, um, which is good because knowing what it is, is the first step in avoidance of phishing. So phishing is a fraudulent practice of sending emails, uh, pretending to be someone else in order to get personal information like passwords, credit card information, answer to security questions, uh, things like that. Those are, those are the most common reasons to do phishing. And using this data, a lot of the time you'll put yourself at risk if you fall victim to one of these, uh, to one of these attacks, you'll put yourself at risk for losing uh, basically everything, whether it's personally or for your business or for um, for any number of things that you may be involved in. Uh, phishing is a very, very uh, dangerous problem that has become more and more prevalent as time has gone on. So it's important to know how to spot the attacks. So here's some common themes, requests for personal information. So as it says here, legitimate companies won't typically ask you to send passwords, credit card numbers, or other personal information through email. Normally they'll have secure portals for things like that. They'll have different, uh, different ways that you can securely send information because sending it through email leaves a bit too much of a paper trail and can lead to uh, a lot of things that are negative happening in the future, which is why these companies aren't going to ask you to send it through email. Uh, anything password, credit card related, or any other personal information, um, while it may seem safe and may seem legitimate, a lot of the times they aren't going to ask you through that. Um, another thing would be urgent or threatening language. So phishing emails might create a sense of urgency, uh, stating things like your account will be locked or urgent action required. 
Um, another way that they'll use this urgent or threatening language is they will uh, they'll pretend to be someone who is who is higher up in your company, and they will use that use that authority to threaten you with with action, which obviously they can't take because they are just pretending to be that entity. Um, and that's that's another way that they'll do it. Um, and so that's another way to to sort of tell, because most of the time people will not email you if it's something that urgent. You'll more frequently get um, they'll come to you in person is one thing that they can do if it's someone that you would work with uh, or they would they would call you. Um, and at that point, a lot of the time you will know their number or no. So that's that's another thing. Um, that they would do is they'll, they'll make it urgent or they will make it seem like a threat if you don't do anything at, at that point. Um, a common one a few years ago was fake PayPal emails going around saying that your PayPal would be closed if you didn't give them your password right now and confirm your account within the next two hours, things like that. Because having that urgency will make you not think as clearly. Uh, one last thing is misspellings and poor grammar. This isn't a definitive indicator, as it says, but many phishing emails will contain noticeable grammatical errors or awkward phrasing. One of the reasons why is a lot of these phishing emails will come from countries that are uh, not English speaking countries. So you'll have a lot of uh, a lot of countries where, you know, you'll have these people send out these emails that don't actually have English as their first language and may not understand how to spell or how the grammar works. So you'll end up with a lot of this awkward phrasing, a lot of these typos um, and syntax errors. Uh, here's another here's another few um, suspicious sender addresses. So slightly misspelled email address or additional characters or come from a domain that's close to the legitimate one. So for example, Netflix instead of Netflix or uh, PayPal instead of PayPal. You know, you'll you'll have some of these some of these addresses that look really really close. But if you look a little bit closer, you'll notice that it's not the legitimate address. Uh, generic greetings, dear customer or dear user. Um, or another example would be dear and then whatever the beginning of your email is, because uh, they they automatically assume that your first name dot last name when they send these out. So um, if you get dear customer, dear user, or dear just the beginning part of your email, then a lot of the times that's a uh, that is a spam bot that has developed that has developed that email and has sent it out. So um, another thing would be unusual sender behavior. So uh, this kind of goes along with the uh, the part about urgency earlier with people that would be higher ups in a company. Um, normally your CEO is not going to email you. Um, I, I hate to say it, if you are part of a larger company, especially your CEO, isn't going to email you. If you're part of a smaller company, your CEO, if it's something urgent would just go and talk to you. So it's important to recognize that unusual behavior, uh, that may happen. Uh, or if it's like an account manager that you've worked with before and suddenly they're sending from a different email address, that would be unusual behavior as well. So make sure to verify that. Um, and if it if it seems like they're acting a little bit more urgent or suspicious than they normally would, it's possible their email has been compromised. So make sure to verify with them either in person or through another means of communication, whether that be a phone call or a different... Uh, or a different form of thing like text, or if you have them on social media, even potentially talking to them through one of those, don't talk to them through email because it's potentially uh, compromised at that point. So here's some common phishing emails. Um, so there's the, uh, there's the PayPal one that I was talking about. You have 24 hours to solve the problem or your account will be permanently disabled. I know that I have actually um, received this specific one before. Um, congrats, you can get, another thing would be prizes. Um, it's pretty rare that you will actually get a prize through uh, email. So it's it's not exactly something that you would, uh, that you would normally get. Um, I do see some questions. I will be answering those during the Q&A, so make sure to stick around. Um, here is the second poll here. Have you or your business been affected by a phishing attack before? So 
if you or your business has been. Um, I know how terrible that can be. Um, so there's a, I've seen plenty of businesses fall victim to these and it causes a loss of consumer trust alongside the fact that it causes a loss of profits. Uh, it can often make you have to redo systems, which will cost labor. So there's a lot of costs associated with being affected by these phishing attacks. So with that in mind, uh, it seems as if, it seems as if uh, a lot of you have, uh, have been affected by one of these phishing attacks before. So there's some steps that you can take that will help prevent that. So using stronger passwords would be one thing um, to prevent people from just cracking your password just by knowing basic information. Uh, a lot of information that people used to make passwords out of back when the internet was in its infancy, like their birth date, um, that's stuff that's pretty easily available online, especially with the advent of social media. So using a stronger password, like a combination of letters that means something to you, but not to anybody else, um, or using, using some type of strong password generator um, or password manager would also be an option. Um, prioritizing physical safety, so not typing your passwords uh, in front of people who you don't know and trust would be one thing to, uh, to avoid. Um, using strong recovery questions. So don't use your mother's maiden name because once again, that's a thing that's super easy to find out. Um, you can find that on websites like Ancestry or uh, other websites of that nature. So make sure to always use stronger recovery questions, things that are a little bit harder to find. So not the street that you grew up on, not the name of your, your mother's maiden name, but things like you could honestly even lie for those recovery questions that way, only you know the answer to that. Um, and also resetting passwords often is good practice because sometimes these passwords will somehow get leaked anyway. So it's always good to reset your passwords as often as you can. Even with all of that, if someone falls for one of these phishing things, one of these phishing scams at your company, it is important to take other precautions to prevent those emails from even getting to you in the first place. So Cradle Point, uh, to your question earlier, Eric, uh, Cradle Point is a good option for something that has some of these things built in. So replacing your basic head end unit from someone like Comcast or someone like Spectrum with a Cradle Point device and using that as your primary source actually can give you some extra security uh, in a few ways. One of these ways would be web filtering. So using web filtering, you can actually uh, run it to where the network administrator can actually set different web filtering policies, whether that's a default action to block traffic and make it to where only certain websites who, who have been whitelisted are allowed to uh, be used or whether that's to allow traffic and blacklist common websites uh, or blacklist any websites that you've seen phishing people use, uh, that would be a good way to do that. So blacklisting and whitelisting these, uh, whether you run a blacklist or a whitelist protocol, uh, web filtering is one way to keep people safe to prevent those passwords and such from getting leaked in the first place. Another way would be through Cradle Point would be their secure threat manager. Uh, it will actively manage and dispatch any threats on the web uh, for those who are running a Cradle Point advanced license. And what this can do is you can actually configure it to either, uh, you can configure it to detect, you can configure it to detect and prevent. Um, and you can even configure what the, uh, what the failure error action is and make it to where if an event occurs, you can actually have it shut down your internet until you've figured out what's going on and then you manually get it back up and running, uh, which is a great thing to have because uh, that'll, that'll help you keep your data safe, your customer's data safe. It'll help you keep that consumer trust. It'll help you keep your labor where it needs to be. And it'll, in the long run, save you a lot of money and a lot of heartache uh, when you have things like that enabled. So this is uh, what I was talking about as far as the detection and prevention. Uh, there's two functionalities on Cradle Point, uh, IPS and IDS, which is the um, prevention and the detection. So when you set up 
uh, IPS that will detect and prevent, which is the highest form of protection. The second that it detects an attack, then it will drop packets, which means it'll it'll just immediately shut down the uh, the connection that was causing that that attack. It'll immediately shut down any connection with that. Um, detection would, if you have it set to detect only, it'll tell you immediately the second that the potential attack happens um, and allow you to address it as soon as possible. Now, why you might want that set is sometimes these detections, um, sometimes these detections, it could be that you're running some type of a test or something of that nature, and you don't necessarily want it to shut down that thing immediately. You want to see how that ends up working. So detection, prevention, um, those are those are both very important things to have. Um, here's the error action that I was talking about. So once it detects threat management, you have two options. Um, allowing network traffic uh, will allow things to flow as normally to prevent uh, to prevent you from shutting down uh, anything that might need to be going through. And then you also have deny traffic, which will deny all network traffic until the thing has been addressed, until that problem has been addressed. Now, when you deny that traffic, that will prevent a lot of those attacks from actually going through, and it will allow you to keep you and your company and your customers safe. Um, application ID logging uh, is another thing. So if, if intrusion prevention uh, packet scan is uh, enabled, then packet scanning can identify thousands of applications and log the detected applications in the system log. This does create very long logs, but they are also very detailed. So you're able to tell exactly what has happened so that you can prevent a like attack in the future. Um, here's another, uh, another thing. So you can make sure to update things frequently um, as well. Uh, updating your settings here. So you can use the, the setting update here to, uh, to make sure that the database gets updated and you can choose the frequency to prevent data from being overused. So let's say if you're running it only on data and you don't want it to you know, constantly be pinging for updates, constantly downloading any uh, definition and database updates, um, which is what your antivirus will do when you get an antivirus update, it's often uh, getting those updates for, for threat management and database updates um, as new threats become known. So to minimize usage, you can actually set a schedule to where it will only update monthly if you're running it through a cellular modem. And then if you're running it through the internet, if you're running it through your wireline connection, which will often not have a data cap, you can have it set to uh, update daily so that that way you can keep your people safe um, and keep it as up to date as possible to prevent the most amount of threats from getting through. So we do have a partnership with CradlePoint, um, which has allowed us to understand how we can use these. Um, and that's part of the reason why we were able to give you this information is because of our partnership with CradlePoint. So because of our partnership with CradlePoint, giving us this, uh, this access to this information, we've been able to help people get protected a lot easier than we would have been able to uh, without it. And while we do provide MSP services and we do help people uh, with our people here, we've also been able to set up these different devices through CradlePoint, which has immensely lightened the workloads on a lot of IT staff because they no longer will have to work as hard to prevent a lot of this a lot of these issues that come through. Um, however, an ounce of prevention, as they say, you know, uh, so it's important to both prevent on your side, on the on the person side and on the tech side. So as important as it is to have uh, people pay attention to what they're clicking on, it's just as important to make sure that your equipment is up to date and keeping your people safe. So now we'll do Q&A. So uh, Eric has some uh, some questions here. Uh, I did already address the can a cradle point do anything to protect against phishing? Yes, uh, it can prevent uh, invalid uh, websites from loading properly, which is great. And it can also uh, 
if you click on one of those websites and an intrusion happens, it can shut down the connection to that intrusion, which is fantastic. It'll prevent uh, people from your company from having, you know, uh, these slip ups happen because as careful as we all are, slip ups do happen. And thankfully, Cradle Point is there to help you. Um, or do you offer managed protection against things like this? So we do offer management uh, through the Cradle Points. We can offer remote management through the Cradle Points and we can help you out through that. We can also offer managed service um, and help you out with uh, your general email flow and things of that nature. So, so we have a few different ways where we've, uh, where we've been able to help a few different companies with getting phishing to no longer be as big of an issue. So Cradle Point is a fantastic resource for that. Um, using Cradle Points and using us at the same time, you'll be able to make sure that intrusion attempts are mitigated to a much lower level than they would be otherwise. Um, so we're reaching the end of this webinar. Uh, if you would like to schedule a consultation and download today's slides, you can feel free to go to rcntechnologies.com slash webinar. Uh, and there you will find some resources regarding this, uh, this webinar and how to schedule a consultation with us. Uh, we would be happy to talk to you about your entire network stack. So feel free to uh, reach out to us through that. And one last question for y'all. How did we do today? So I would like to know how I did today. Um, if you have any, uh, if you have any input on that, I would greatly appreciate that. So feel free to answer that question. Uh, other than that, we are, uh, we are finishing up this webinar, wrapping this up. If there are any last minute questions, feel free to shoot them in the chat, but otherwise, thank you so, so much for attending. I appreciate it very, very much. And hopefully we'll get to see you guys around for some consultations and we will help you guys get your stuff to be a bit safer for you and your customers. Thank you so much for attending and I hope you'll have a fantastic day.